Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. Our first set of leaks for chapter 1079 for One Piece is out. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the information that we have so far about this chapter titled The Red-Haired Pirates and Emperor's Crew. Now before we dive into this, we always like to remind all of our wonderful listeners that this is just a summary of the events that are happening, and we don't have images or even the complete dialogues that it's going to happen. So we're just going to talk about the information that we have so far, but make sure you stay tuned to the channel because as more leaks for chapter 1079 come out, we'll be sure to bring you another video. Before we dive into the video, if you're new to the channel or even if you've watched a bunch of our videos, we'd be absolutely honored if you'd leave us a like and even subscribe and maybe leave us a comment letting us know what you thought of the video. It really helps us out, especially with that old YouTube algorithm, and it keeps motivating us to make more content. And if you'd like to help out the channel in a bigger way, consider sharing this video or another one of your favorites with a friend. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So my friends, to start off our leaks of chapter 1079, the cover the story is not a continuation of the Neo Mad story, but rather shows Luffy giving water to a lion because he's mistaking it for a sunflower. So it's rather more of a comic image and doesn't have much story or doesn't pertain at least to what's been going on with the Neo Mads group that has happened in many of the previous chapters. The chapter begins with a flashback about York that happened a few hours back. York realized that the world government had betrayed her and that they also wanted to take her life, just as they intended to take the lives of all the other Vegapunks who are on Egghead Island. Realizing this, York is preparing to escape the island before the Marines arrive and also orchestrate a new plan to achieve their goals without the help of Vegapunk or the world government. Now, although she was betrayed by the world government, she still had a great plan in mind to escape the island without any problems, using the Seraphim to her advantage. So to set her plan in motion, York orders all of the Seraphim to take the lives of everyone on Egghead, except for her life, the Cypherpole agents who are captured in Egghead's underground lab, and Stella's life. Afterwards, York ordered S-Snake to turn her to stone first and then return her to normal. That way, no one would suspect that she might be the traitor among the punks. It seems that York may have also given some other order to S-Snake, but we can't see it in the chapters, so this order will only be presented in future chapters, being something that's possibly very important for York's plans to work and may even pertain to her escape plan. The flashback and then we see S-Snake flying somewhere in the present time, following that last command that York had given. But as I just said, we have no idea what that order that was given by York is. Next, we see that the evacuation of Egghead Island is continuing, and several scientists and Egghead workers begin to try and escape the island before the Navy or any other bigger danger can arise and prevent their escape. However, outside the island, we can see a ship quickly approaching, and it's a ship carrying the flag of the Blackbeard Pirates, and it is rapidly approaching Egghead Island. Island. This may be foreshadowing that Teach may have actually managed to defeat Law and his crew, managing to get their road poneglyph notes that Law had gotten in Wano. So if Teach does in fact arrive in Egghead, and it isn't just some other ship that's a part of his fleet, this proves that there is indeed going to be a huge battle on Egghead Island. We're going to see the Marines, along with Agorasei, members of Cypherpole, two Yonkos, and scientists all fighting each other. A fight between some of the most powerful characters we have in our story right now. And this fight really could turn out to be something remarkable that could have a great impact on the whole world with the end of it. And it could have a totally unexpected turnaround that could make the story follow a new course. The next scene cuts to the island of Elbaf, and we see Kid is facing off against the captains and leaders of the red-haired pirate's fleet, while Shanks and his most powerful allies are still on Elbaf observing that confrontation. It's said that the red-haired pirate's fleet captains or commanders are weaker than the fleet captains of other Yonko, and only the senior officers are the most strong along with their captain Shanks. It seems that these other fleet captains have managed to survive their adventures around the world because Shanks gave everyone his flag to protect them. This way, no one would dare attack them out of fear and respect that Captain Shanks would cut them to pieces if anyone attacked one of his captains. So the most powerful of the red-haired pirate's crew remain near shore and they talk as they approach the battle. And Lucky Roo tells his captain Shanks to stay on the ship while they take care of Kid's pirates. But Shanks warns and tells him not to underestimate Kid and his crew because despite being young, Kid has a bounty of three billion, a bounty that only a few pirates could ever earn. Shanks then asks Hongo if there's any new information about Blackbeard and his crew, and Hongo responds that they only know that Blackbeard has left Hachinosu, the island known as Pirate Island or Full of Lead. Knowing only this limited information, it makes Shanks a little worried, saying that he thought Blackbeard would appear in Wanokuni, but it didn't turn out exactly how he thought. This shows that the Shanks really wasn't going to want to see Luffy or go after Bartolomeo. He went there to check and make sure that Teach wasn't around causing larger problems for the citizens of Wano, in addition to also wanting to go to Elbath to see his giant. 
client friends. So then, Shanks asks Yasa to see if Kid's pirate's wounds from the Wano battle are healed before starting their next fight, just to be fair and make sure that this was a true fight between these two great pirate crews. Yasa uses his incredible eyesight to be able to observe his enemies, and shortly afterwards notifies Shanks that Kid and his pirates are indeed fully healed from the previous battle that they had in Wano. The scene then turns to Kid, who's building a massive railgun as Shanks makes it to shore, and Kid shoots his railgun at the ships of Shanks' fleet, causing a huge explosion because of his new ability. In one fell swoop, Kid destroys all of the ships in the red-haired pirate's fleet, as well as defeating all of the captains with this one attack. But that's not actually what seemed to happen. Kid's attack was in the future sight that Shanks saw thanks to his advanced observation hockey. Ben Beckman notices that Shanks has a slightly worried expression and asks him if he sees a great future happening in the fight that was just about to happen in front of him. We next see Shanks get angry and quite serious, knowing how much damage Kid will do if he lets Kid attack. So Shanks jumps alone toward Kid's pirate ship and attacks them with a massive attack called Kamasari, known as the Divine Departure. This attack is shown in an epic double-page spread, being the first time that Shanks uses such a powerful attack within our story of One Piece. In addition, it's also the same attack that Goldie Roger used against Kazuki Odin in the past, making this scene all the more incredible. But because of such a powerful attack, Kid is knocked unconscious, and Killer, who tried to help Kid block the attack, coughs up blood and is unable to move. Kid and Killer were defeated together in just one single attack. This shows us exactly how incredibly strong this attack is. Kid, along with Killer, weren't even able to defend the attack in the short amount of time, demonstrating why Shanks has earned that title of Yonko. Now, seeing that their captain and the right-hand man of his crew have been defeated, Kid's pirates beg Shanks for mercy, giving him all the road poneglyph information they have. Shanks, for his part, takes the information by saying absolutely nothing and jumps away from Kid's pirate ship. And on the shore, Dory and Broggy start talking to Kid's pirates. Dory and Broggy call them out by calling them little humans and saying, that if they point a gun at other people's homeland, they have to be prepared to meet that same fate. And then, Dorian Bragi used the same attack we saw them use in Little Garden called Hakoku and completely destroyed the Victoria Punk with a single powerful blow. So Kid and his entire crew drown at sea. Now, although this might be another ruse by Oda, this may have definitively ended the crew of an incredible pirate of the worst generation in just a few minutes, making the world understand the danger of facing one of the four most powerful Yonko in the world. Next, in a rare, quite long monologue, the narrator says that the three billion bounty Eustace Kid and his crew were completely annihilated which could mean that Kid was indeed defeated and possibly lost his life in that quick engagement. Gradually, we see three of the most powerful pirates of the worst generation being defeated. Law is confirmed to have been defeated by Teach with his sudden appearance in Egghead, and at the end of this chapter, we witness the end of Kid. This means that Luffy is the only surviving pirate from Wado's Great Confrontation, and it could be an indication that Luffy could be the next pirate to fall since he's at the center of a great confrontation that's about to take place on Egghead Island. Luffy, along with his crew and Vegapunk, is gonna face the Marines, Gorosei, Cypherpole, and even Blackbeard, who is going to Egghead to possibly take down Luffy and his crew. Luffy and his fellows will be heavily outnumbered and will face some of the most powerful enemies that they've ever faced in the world. This could lead to his defeat and even his possible capture. Well, my friends, there you have it. That is all the information that we have so far about our upcoming chapter of One Piece, 1079. Please remember that next week we are not going to have a chapter, so we're going to take in some different ideas and talk about what could potentially happen in the next chapters of One Piece. So with all that said, we'd now love to know what you think about it, my friends. Do you think Luffy is the next of the worst generation to fall? And also, how do you think him and the Vegapunks and everybody else on Egghead are going to make their escape? How can they make it out now that not only do we already have the Marines and everybody else inbound, but now Teach is on his way. And finally, what do you think Teach is after now that he's making landfall? Is he there for Luffy or perhaps Vegapunk? And because he knows something else that we just haven't seen yet. Let us know what you think about all that in the comments below. So as we wrap up our video for the day, we'd like to thank you all so much for watching the video, especially those of you who've made it here to the very end. Be sure you comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And also, since you made it this far, give us a like and hit that red subscribe button before you head out to take on the rest of your day. I hope to see you all in our next video, and let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.